trying to throw the ball On first and goal Second and goal Panicking at third Fourth, I'm wishing for a month Welcome to the 510 Huddle We back with my boy Akil Performance coach for JLT How you doing today? I'm doing good, how y'all doing? Okay, what up, family? We got family in the house right here, man We doing great Yes, sir, right yes, sir you feel me from the uh, played at Berkeley High, went on played football at, at DVC, then played at Concord, correct? Yeah, Concord. Balled out there, and now he's down in LA. Uh, performance coach with JLT, training some of the top athletes in the world. Um, sorry to have you on the show, bro. So a real Bay, yeah, my man, young Bay legend. You on your way, kill for real, brother. Yeah. I like what you're doing down there. I, I, that's why we got you on here, fam. Appreciate and, uh, it. I really appreciate what you're doing, man. You know. You a East Bay cat too. Let them know. You feel me? Always, always. Right here. <laughs> yeah. We get into that every time. We, we oh that man, time. we don't want to do that. Who's your, who's, your t- who's you play for when you younger? His team was East ridiculous. Bay. You know, East Bay? Oh, it was okay. hard. His team was way harder than any team. Yeah. I was on. I mean, I come from some. You know, a lot of young hitters. A Crusaders, all we do is hit. So. Y'all get hit. I don't they know. was scoring. Yeah. That's it. They was putting up numbers. Twenty eight nothing first three minutes. Doing <laughs> numbers, ridiculous. I think I lost two games in four years. But well, anyway, it was a different it. topic. <laughs> was on ESPN. I saw that. Yeah, me. Let's. We had cuts. We had cuts. We're no sign of play. We had cuts. Like cuts. It's but we can argue though. all day. Zay, tell us about a little bit about uh, Ber- the Berkeley High, man. Berkeley High experience, where you started out at, and, um, and then we can get into college and JLT. Started at Berkeley High. Had a we – was, we was decent. I mean, we didn't lose a league game, but we didn't have the size. We didn't have, the, you know, the speed like the – Deer Valleys, the Pittsburghs, you know. You, you, you played for Barnes when you were there? Nah, you I played for uh, Sims. Okay, 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 okay. He's a good yeah. coach, good coach. Yeah. But uh, Zola, it's your freshman year? My freshman year. Yeah. We just mm. didn't have the numbers to, to play against the teams out, out in BVAL and the Monte Vista Leagues. But we was good in the Bay, you know. Yeah. But when it came down to playing out there, they just weight room. Did you? I'm sorry. Who who we had last was it? Coach Henderson. He was speaking on Coach Zoe. I was just gonna ask you. I know you say they leave before did you start freshman year. No, no, no. Zoe left. So uh, I was gonna ask. Did you get any of his wisdom while you was there? You feel me? Because you know Coach Zoe's a you know a legendary coach in the Bay. So Zoe like my uncle. Mm-hmm. My dad played at Cal State East Bay together and yeah. all that. They coached at Mac for the longest. Yeah, so I'd summer. be up at Mac. I was a water boy. And then when Zoe went to Berkeley, still the water boy, him and my dad went up there. And then when they left, it was it was cool. But, like, I was hurt when they left. Because yeah. I knew the Sims was good, but I wanted to play for Zoe. And he thought about leaving from uh, Berkeley oh, High? Yeah. So many yeah. times. I was going to go to Mac. It was either Mac or uh, Los Lomas right. for the longest. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Did uh, I want to talk about? I know specifically. How do you feel like your time with that be? I know you talked about the team, but how do you feel like your personal experience? Part playing? Uh, uh, playing it was amazing. The school alone is amazing. Probably the best high school in in the Bay Area. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like the little like, fair, which y'all be having every year, y'all rally or something. They took that out after us. Oh, oh, was it last year. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I know we, family. They've been here for years. They, it man. was the last year that because yeah. we had it. It was a little too tight. But uh, <laughs> nah, it was good to like just playing there was great. Like, you played both sides of the ball, right? Both sides, yeah. I played a uh, corner, running back, receiver, kick return, punt return, all that. You guys stole the league championship from me. Yeah, man. We'll speak on that later, though. 2013. Nah. Yeah, it's good, man. It's good. I know. Uh, I, I kind of want to. I know you had a uh, you went to DVC. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun fact: I played against a kill. Was it 2014 we played against each other? 14, my second yeah. year. Yep. We lost by one point. Um, you know, that's all another story. I think you, damn it, you tried to light me up too. They I threw did. me a little. I, I believe you threw me a bubble I screen. I tried to light yeah. you up. Yeah. Now he threw me a bubble screen, and he read it. I remember seeing the ball in the air. And I just, I like, I'm like, oh, I'm about to get lit. Like yeah. as soon as do the bubble, but let me. But talk, go ahead, go ahead. Zach. I was gonna say, uh, you know, through your time in DVC, how you know how was the JUCO route for you? I just want to you know a lot of people at the JUCO. I just want to hear more of your JUCO experience. Uh, the JUCO route was it was pretty good. Uh, I stayed out in Martinez, so I was a little I was off uh, from living with my parents, so I was able to grow up a little bit. But uh, the JUCO route wasn't wasn't too tough for me because uh, like I had the work studies, so I was had, I had checked to pay for rent. I had a job on the weekends and stuff, so it wasn't it wasn't too tough for me, you know. But uh, that's, I'm glad we hear that perspective because 
I feel like social media, it's a, everyone has the terrible JUCO struggle type of thing. It's, like, it's kind of like a theme, you know? And another thing with that, though, so my roommates, they were from, all from out of state. Mm -hmm. So it was a struggle for them. Because mm -hmm. yeah. they would uh, first have to pay, what was it, out like of a state thousand, fee. thousand yeah. dollars? Yeah, crazy cr fees. Yeah, crazy fees, fees to crazy. where yeah. 9000 for the semester and plus rent. So then it was just like... Man. How you gonna How you gonna get a job Still play football Like Cause I was able to I got a job Make yeah. good enough money To keep getting by They was getting a job To really pay for A lot of bills And stuff So They have a totally Different story than me But yeah. The Juga route was cool Like Coach Dar was great Coach mm -hmm. Dar was my He was DB coach too so Man, He was, was head coach Andy I was gonna give him A quick backstory on that About Coach Dar And then It wasn't really So much Coach Dar Cause you remember I was supposed to come up there Right Q I came for like Two weeks of spring ball he already been there for a season. So I get up there, uh, Coach Vince, like, yeah, come up here. We're going to uh, get you. We need a running back. I'm like, all right, this one, I'll still have a running back. We need a running back. Coach Longero, Longero Longe Los Lomas coach, yeah. offensive coordinator. I get there the first days of spring uh, spring install. We, we in uh, Chalk Talk. He put up about three run plays, trying to juice me in or whatever. He's like, yeah, we finna run these or whatever today. So we get out to practice, bro. We do seven. We do everything the whole day. I probably touched the ball twice the whole day, bro. He talking about it. Every day he kept trying. I, I did it for like two weeks. He kept bringing back some. I know we, we trying to run the ball. I'm telling you, we want to run the ball this year. Every, the receivers, everybody want to block. We want to run this ball. Man, I was there for two weeks. I should. Oh, I can't do it. He I can't do to it, bro. Right. Four wide. Oh, yeah. like, My Gerald wanted to spread it out every <laughs> time and throw that thing, so bro. We had the opposite, you know. After dark, cool people though. That, that's funny that you say that because after you know, I, little knucklehead got kicked out of my school. I was like trying to figure out what JUCO I was gonna go to, yeah. and I always like, all right, I'm not going to Laney. I don't throw enough. Yeah. And I went to Sierra because they had a this new air raid coach. She picked up the Texas Tech offense, and then but I was like, no, nah, I want to go to DVC because it was on that, that rock. Yeah, yeah. Should have went there. I don't know the story, but yeah, they was really throwing it. Y'all had a cool quarterback that year. Yeah, yeah. And y'all had, uh, I mean, y'all had an overall solid team. Yeah, yeah, Adam yeah. That was good. Yeah. Where did he end up going, Q? He went to San Jose. St no, not San Jose. Uh -huh. He went to San Diego State San for Diego. like a, a season or something, but he switched to linebacker. And then, okay. And then he played linebacker in high. He was a linebacker and quarterback, <laughs> middle back and quarterback. Mm -hmm. So then when he switched and went to uh, down there, they switched him. He ended up leaving, going up to Humboldt, and just yeah. finished up at Humboldt. Okay, okay. okay. And y'all had like a well, has poly D arm in that year too, I think. Yeah. Or was that the year before? The year before we had concrete. <laughs> hey, how old you? Right? You had to be like twenty six at that time. Concrete, hey, concrete, real legend. Hey, yeah. we yeah. Running three months high, right? Yeah. <laughs> Running through shit. Go ahead. Oh, we had boys. Yeah. That was that was probably the best D line I ever played on. Played yeah. With. Uh, I know, so I know it was seconds. too easy, huh? Two seconds, just got to go, you know, two, three seconds. Yeah, they going to yeah. get there. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was one of those things. And, like, and then from, from DVC, was that Concord? How was Concord for you out there? That's a big, it was a, big switch. It was a culture bay. shot yeah. when mm -hmm. I first got out there. I was calling moms, like, I'm ready to come home. <laughs> I was like, I'm over. Mind you, I went in the springtime, so it's snowing. Waking up in the snow. Going mm -hmm. to workouts, 5 a.m. Mind you, DVC, we didn't have 5 a.m. workouts. Right. We was 3 p.m., 4 p.m. It was yeah. every day up at 5 a.m. And I was just like, I'm over this. When I got there, they were 13-1 and the year before. So they was a game away from the Natty. So I'm like, oh, we going to the Natty this year. Everybody came back. Nine out of 11 players on offense came back. Uh like eight out of the eleven on defense, they just lost their their corner, the All American. Mm -hmm. So I thought I was coming in. Uh, they, they had to the same coach side too. Everybody. Okay. So the crazy, uh, the coaching stuff. The head coach when I was there, he's the offensive coordinator at UNLV now. Mm -hmm. So I knew he was eventually Big gonna, gonna yeah. keep bubbling well, because he went like fifty two and ten when he was at. Conquer, okay. yeah. Okay. And then he went to FAU right after that, and okay. just slow. I wonder if he, he was under Lane. Over he was there. under Lane. Okay. Yeah, okay. he was under Lane with the O line coach. Okay. okay. And then went to UNLV O line coach and run specialist or run co coordinator. coordinator. Gotcha. And this year he's about to be the, the OC. So. Okay. 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 But yeah, yeah, our no, quarterback, was, I think, from Lane, and no, he gone. He was the year uh, we played. He, yeah. Uh, he went uh, there. Kirk. Yeah. White boy. Gas burners. Yeah. Yeah. But nah, it was it was good. It was cool. The the first year was a little tough, but the second year when I moved from corner to safety, you put up a crazy stats your last year, didn't you? Yeah, I yeah. I did I did pretty good my last year. Like 
it opened my eyes to I should have been playing safety. Because mm. me at corner, I like playing corner, but I got bored out there. At safety, I always wanted to be in the mix. Yeah. So my eyes sometimes would be looking at the quarterback corner. You just can't do that. Safety, I was able to roam around. And my coach, like, he played six years in the league, our, our uh, linebacker coach. And he was, like, pretty much our DC at the time, too. And he just kind of let me roam around and, and let me be free. So my I last... back to ECA thing. You see the whole picture. Kill, you feel me? Then I be talking, man, uh, uh, Coach Amon gave me a tip early on, like in high school. He was like, man, besides the elites, and it's only a handful. We talk about it all the time in the NFL, only a, a handful of elite mm-hmm. quarterbacks. He like, man, the rest of these cats is staring down. We're like, come on, man. That's why I was picking shit off all the exactly. time. St- you telling me where you going with the ball. Hey, but Kyle, I always thought you would have been like a perfect nigga. Did you ever get some time here, bro? I thought so, cause you, you cover well, bro. You, you coming up, you going to tackle. You in that body. I just thought you would be a perfect nigga. So when I was at DVC, I was, I was at the nickel a lot, okay. you know. But uh, I remember being on the outside. That's why I asked you. No, I okay. played the outside too. But, yeah. Because uh, Dar, we ran a... Jerick was on the other side of you, right? Who was on the other side of you? Uh... Jarek, now Jarek played the inside a lot. Jay Will, this other dude from Texas, he was on the outside. But we ran, we ran a, a nickel the whole game, yeah. nickel or dime the whole game. So if I wasn't inside, then I'd be outside. outside. Okay, you know, you. and yeah. then a year before, we would just interchange. Like every every series, we would, all right, kill you. You're in the outside. Boom, you're in the slot now. You have to slide. Yeah. So we, that's how we did it. Okay. So when I, it's crazy when I was at DVC. Southern Miss came and they want to see me as a safety. Yeah. Never play safety. I played safety JV year in high school, yeah. and I, I just I'm not big enough to be a safety. But now safeties are this side, like yeah, this type Tyran. of frame. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like the new safeties. So then when they did that, that's when Dar was like, I want to need some run at safety. Let's let's try out at safety. So when I went to my school, my first year there, they had me as a cornerback I was the next guy up at cornerback because they had the two corners and then I was the next guy up at safety but I was so hard headed thin like I'm not playing safety I'm not a safety I'm a corner I'm, 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 I'm better than these dude yeah, I'm at corner so they throw me in that nickel yeah. but I'm like I'm a corner after that year happened went to the DC said let me play safety because I one game our starting safety went out yeah. so I ended up the game with nine tackles first time playing safety yeah. All over the field. I'm like, yeah. I could really do this. Like, yeah. this is me. So then he started putting me more at nickel. So I just got, got more in rotation with that. And then the next year came, they uh, let me play safety. And then so, the rest so, is his. So you kind of like me, Kill, because I played, played it all back there. I, I didn't get a lot of cor- corner rest, but I was going to ask you what's your favorite as far as out of all those positions. Mine always was playing in nickel compared to any of the free or strong spots. Just because I like being inside. I like being closer to the ball, the line of scrimmage. And uh, you feel me? I just feel like it's only uh, so many things that you can do from the slot. You're going to break out. You feel so, me? So, the nickel spot is cool in certain defenses. Certain defense, for sure. It's for sure about what defense. At so. DVC, we just play man all game. So, I'm going to slot all game. No real blitzes, none of that. Nah, I see. When yeah. I went to Concord, still no blitzes. Like, you just manning Come. up and, you know. So, I like... I like playing free more than anything because yeah. I, I felt like I was able to sideline to sideline, like hash mark to hash mark. But nickel was, was still a cool position, but free, I would say free. So you never got that experience like your boy. Man, I was coming off the edge. I was, I was doing it all, kill. I was in there. You know, now, I, I, used to, there. I used to beg co- coach, let me go. Let yeah. me go off the edge. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 we're going to say that. Man, <laughs> that's a, that's their favorite line. It's, so it's week, we're going to say eight. the cat blitz. We're going to say the cat blitz. It's week about. eight. Like, yeah. When we gonna use it? Man, so man. Seth used to be isn't about that every day. Like, man, when we gonna get a corner blitz in? Like, I just know I feel like receiver when a corner blitz, you don't even think about that. Like, you're supposed to say like you're, you're supposed to when you're at slot, receiver, you know, you're right? to, no, you're supposed to right? no, your line though. Oh, the line. Okay. Like that's how we come. If you're in the slot, you're like he's coming, he's coming, and so that helps the line out, and the backs gonna pick him up. Okay, but like. It works when you do it because half the time I'm not even thinking about his DB about to blitz. Like keeping what I'm thinking about are you gonna press off, what he's about to do, okay then three, two, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know why coaches don't call them. I think it's more it happened scared. like once or twice a game. Like yeah. it's one of those things like You got sprinkled yeah, in there at yeah, delicate yeah, moments. Yeah, exactly. I feel like once a game it works well. Some coaches like do like once or twice a year, like no, once a game you don't catch him. 
We did a little bit of uh, 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 Southeastern. What I liked about the way we did it the few times that we did run it. Though. Yeah, the way I liked it, though, we used to bogey a lot of shit. So we'll have the corner out there. He, he looked like he top down man by himself. No safety. Safety on the half, so I don't look like nobody really on top of him. And we'll be like, hey, creep in. It's a lot of skies. But it was, it was five. And so he really had trail. You feel me? So he could creep in. You feel me? Act like he coming. Ball snap. He could be fully inside, but just turn around nice. on the trail. He you got guys some, had some real oh, that was my shit. defensive coaches. Yeah, they were yeah. uh, from Greg Williams, right? Yeah, yeah. Coach, yeah. Yeah, Coach Ryan Roberts. Uh, yeah. DVC. But, like we would a lot of trail. Mm -hmm. Like we would the safeties would be at like five yards, and then right when like right before the snap, they just run out, and all of us we just acting like we blitzing. Yeah. No, we not coming. Yeah. And then right when they snap of the ball, or right, just trail, trail, trail. Ah, get under it. You got safety over the top of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, uh, it, it makes that, it makes a two man or cover two. Five, probably we, two, five. for two man basically. Two it, it, was, it was more like a two man. Yeah, okay. yeah. We called it white. And make it make make the quarter, quarterback throw the hardest throws. You know the out routes, the corners. You feel me? The shit that travels the longest. I feel like that's the hardest thing about the NFL because the QBs can make every throw. They can make them throw. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? I still run it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? And Bill, I just ah, I just seen it on Twitter. I should have sent it to you. Bill got a version of it where he makes the corner cut two if two goes out. So it, it and it was basically uh, the, so, the play. The clip was when Asante Samuels took uh, back a pick six okay. against the Redskins. I think I know. Cause, cause I know Bill game. allows all his corners to play under. That's how he likes to play. Okay. So uh, that's why Asante okay. was dominating with them boy. Pick so I was gonna ask you one thing about safety when you was when you was there at Concord. How deep they had you lined up? Cause when I was at uh, with Greg Williams when we was down there. Uh, Southeastern, he had our our guy that like 18, 20. Like he came in with the lead shit. Like, hey, we flat foot, sit your ass right here, don't move, and come down here. We had my boy Mike and Eugene coming down, smacking shit. We was at like 12. 12? We was at like 12. We played a lot of cover four. Okay. Quarters, cover, yeah, you got beat up, yeah, read. Yeah. A lot of quarters, and but uh, it got it. middle of the season though, like it got to the point where, I mean, we had an all American corner. Like, he was cold. Jay was cold. The other corner, he was all league, all conference, and whatever. You were yourself, right? No, I wasn't. Nah, I wasn't. Did you have, like, last seven, year? Did you have, like, seven, seven picks? Some yeah. crazy shit, yeah. I didn't even make a all conference. <laughs> I don't they worked. Them. Yeah, oh, they crazy. did pass it. I'm, I would just be like. 70 tackles, too. How that they worked. Work. Like, what? We, we just, what was your stat line last year so everyone could hear it? It was 69 tackles. Uh, six picks, two forced fumbles. Yeah, I had to push yeah. in the hard line about mine. Hey. Oh, no, you get a, I'm, I'm writing a letter. I can't even get all yeah. league. Hey. Six <laughs> of them things, man. Nobody out here. Like, other cats not even getting their hands on the yeah. ball. What? And Come six, on, like, bro. I feel like once you go over four picks, that means you can basically pick every other game. That's hard. I'm low-key really mad at your coach now, Q. That shit got me mad because I'm yeah. riding for my young boy. He but, got six. Six of them. He took the pill back six times. Yeah. Come on, that's, man. But let's let's get into what you're doing now. Yeah. Um, JLT is a big thing uh, starting here in the Bay. Now you guys out there in SoCal. You know, I just want to hear, like, what's everything you guys do? A little background on JLT. Um, and, yeah, just everything about it. Just a little background on JLT. Uh, Jamal started this at the Boys and Girls Club in West Oakland in 2006. It was 13, it was 14, it was a, it was a while ago. Uh, started at 715. A lot of guys used to always go to mm -hmm. it. I didn't start going to Jamal until my 11th grade year. And it's still 715. Wasn't even JLT or nothing. He ended up uh, leaving. Don't, don't mean to cut you off. That was in San Leandro, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, yeah, I went to the one uh, when he was moved to San Leandro. They had it rocking. Marshawn was in there. Josh Johnson. Trey I used to Evans. Get with DJ a couple times. Yeah, no, DJ. Yeah. 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 All, the, it, all the dudes from the Bay was pretty much in there. And then he ended up leaving going into my senior year. He left to go to uh, L.A. Because, you know, he always tell me some better market down there. Favorite thing would be like, gotta feed my family, gotta mm -hmm. gotta feed my daughter. So it was like, okay. But uh, yeah, he went down there. He worked under a few guys for like three years, four years, 2013 to like 2016. And then, but he still like knew what he wanted to do, mm -hmm. you know? And like I said, when I, I was telling you earlier, when I was in college, I would go down there to like train in the summertime here and there. Then I had to do an internship 
required like a hundred and some hours. So I was just down there for like two weeks with him. He would train me at night, but I would like work with him in the morning time with like Reggie Bush, Odell. This one I was still in college. So I was able to see firsthand like this is dope. Like mm-hmm. this if I don't make it to the league, I could do this for a living, like yeah. so uh after that, uh I ended up uh not making or nothing, so now I end up talking to him when so I'm actually before that, I'm getting ready for my uh pro day okay. stuff. Yeah. And he's in Dubai. He FaceTimes me. He's like Wait, time out, he's where? Dubai. Okay. Big money. <laughs> he gotta have big yes. money to get yeah. to Dubai. So I'm like, hey, what's up? Like you doing uh combine this year? Nah, I'm out, I'm out here in Dubai. Mind you, he ain't even posted. I'm like, what you mean? He like yeah, you know, I had to business move. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm I'm stressing now. I'm like, I'm like, hey, uh, a few scouts was asking about me. I need somebody for my com, I like for my pro day. And then he was just like, well, I got a guy up in Sacramento. So I went uh, to Game Fit Lim. Oh, he, he Lim. I, know Lim. Yeah, I, I know went to Game Fit up at Sierra. Yeah. yeah. Lim. Hey, he work you hard. Oh, Lim's my guy. He, Lim he, full. He, he, gonna, he gonna kill you at yeah, that. Doing those uh those sled ga- uh, gas th- That's hell. That is hell. Yeah. I, I met him on the seven on seven circuit. Lim oh, was full. Yeah. yeah, Lim was full. Cause Lim was cool though. Cause yeah, he, yeah, uh, he worked all those boys like Shaq, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's how I really got started. Nah, matter of fact, with James you, and all you, that. Older kid, I was gonna say. Matter of fact, Lim coached coached me. I think at the uh, Bay Area Classic. Or, remember that little high school all star when they started. Yeah, next yeah. year. Yeah, he was there. That's why I met Lim too. Yeah. So but, yeah, he was up but, at Game but, Fit. But yeah, I was up at Game Fit. Was up there, but I was like. I'll be there for three three weeks. Then I have to go back to school for like a few days, like check on my teacher. My teacher was cool mm-hmm. about me, like doing what I was doing, but they still was your like, last semester. For last semester, yeah, yeah, exactly. And my mom was like, "You're not gonna just yeah. not finish school." Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going back and forth. Lynn being real cool about it. Uh, Jamal set it up and stuff. Mind you, combine training expensive. Lim, that's why I always respect Lim to this day. He let me go for free. You know, cause I my I had an agent, but he wasn't gonna pay for that. He, he's a good dude. He's a good he dude. Let me train there for free, like JUCO guy. So yeah, he's a good dude. He, he's a good dude. So I always got love for Lim. So then after that, that uh, didn't really happen after that. One few workouts, and then uh, came down. So I came down. What was that? June, the first week of June, I told Jamal like, "Hey, I'm trying to come intern with you." Uh, but I'm still trying to work out a little bit just in case something happens. And mind you, this one, this is the second, like, official year of JLT. So now it's a real buzz going. Yeah. And uh, he got, like, five guys working for him. And he's like, he's like, yeah, uh, I ain't going to get no money right now. Uh, I got all these guys on the staff I got to pay, but uh, you're welcome to come down. And I said, all right, it's good. I'm like, when I need to come? Yeah, yeah. It's Sunday night. He said, meet me at this location Monday morning. I swear to you, bro, I packed my bags, told my mom and dad, like, hey, I got to go. And then told, called my boy down in L.A., like, hey, can I stay with you for a little bit, like, just to see what happens? Let me stay. And then Jamal threw me in the fire right away. Like, he, you know, he helped me a little bit at the start, but he threw me in a fire. And I'm like, mm. I'm like a real runt, like a real intern to where... I still remember one day we at UCLA. He tells me, "Hey, Nike gonna be out here. This is like an audition with yeah. Nike. Like you gotta be on it." I'm carrying four sleds with 45 pounds. I made three trips carrying sleds to the field. Mind you, he like you're not doing it fast enough. Run to the car. Go get the speaker. Speaker just died. Go get this. I'm like, I'm like, bro. Like, I wanted to quit. Yeah. Like that that was the defining day. Yeah, like testing. I wanted to it's quit. Seven, and then yeah. after that, everybody started dropping like flies that was working with us. Cause like at the time it really wasn't money in it. Like it was enough, but like you still had to work and get your own clients. And they didn't understand that. So I just slowly just came up like that. Like, oh he quit. All right, kill, you got more responsibility. Oh he quit. All right, you got a little more responsibility. Mm-hmm. And then it just Strong survive type, you know. Yeah. So, so look, is it just you and him? It'll be looking it, like it's just you and him rocking right out. Okay, it is. Yeah, it's just us. Too. Yeah, yeah, everything yeah. to the graphics, everything, yeah. just us. But uh, but yeah. So I've been doing that for like three years now, and it's been great. Like 
you know, me and Jamal, we be having different opinions about stuff. You know, he's 35. I'm 23. So, <laughs> it'd be times I'd tell him something. He, he would, he'll listen out, but still be like, all right, I like that, but let's do that. And then it's it's cool, though. Like, it's yeah. great criticism back and forth and yeah. stuff. And, like, I tell people when I wasn't really getting paid when I first started, it was really like I was a GA. That's how I felt because mm. even when we didn't have clients, he'd be like, hey, meet me at gym at 8 o'clock. We'd be at gym for, like, five, six hours just going over types of protocols, lifts, this, that, how to be personal. He would sit me down like this. And we'll talk for two hours. He just asked me questions. And like, how are you going to react with this happening? This happened, this happened, this happened. And I'm like, but this is not training. Like, what yeah. Like, what you asking me all these questions for? Like, yeah. it was times I walked out like, what are you doing this for? And then it, it prepared me for now to where like, I got to tell people all the time, training is really like 40% of the battle. Anybody could lift a dumbbell. Anybody could tell somebody to go squat. But can you be personable with the person? Can you? He be a businessman too, you know. Like, can you go in to Starbucks, sit on your computer for four hours after work when you're not getting paid, and find different ideas to make more money for the company and this and that? So, I want to ask you, kind of like, since you are training these top athletes, you know, you know, uh, various sports, is there? Uh, would you say there's any differences when training, let's say? Uh, regular college player from a, let's say the Odell's type of player like far as you know the type of workout intensity anything so, yeah. like I always say with the pros all you pretty much doing is just polishing them up mm-hmm. they they got the tools they just want somewhere where they are gonna get a nice quick little sweat in yeah. quick little pump get some 20 minutes of movement like mm-hmm. actually like just just moving around a little bit and are right, we up out of here the College, the high school and college guys I work with, that's when I bring even more of an intensity because like you get to really build these kids. Okay. Like you get to, you getting a kid like a young, say it's a young eleventh grader that he got the potential, but you got to get on him even more for him to to really show all his potential. Okay. You got Odell that if Odell didn't train he would still be a top 10 receiver. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, with him training, top three, arguably. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I say, like, the difference between the pros and, like, the high school and college. The pros, you don't – you got to be more, like like I told you earlier, like a Dr. Phil with the pros. Yeah. If they want to just come talk, they just going to come talk. Right. The high school, college kids, they just want to – they want to learn and they want to just work. If you tell them do 20 sled pushes, they do 20 sled pushes. You tell the pro do 20 sled pushes, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not doing that. For what? They yeah. ask for what? Yeah. High school kid ain't never going to say for what. They going to say, okay, well, let's yeah. go. Let's rock. You well, know? You, I seen uh, on here. You ever had a guy quit on a workout, though? <laughs> uh, or you like a pro I, guy. You like me. I know you ain't going to say that. You ain't got to say the yeah. names. But, but you like me. High school kid, yeah. High school. But a uh, pro guy, not quit. More just laid out on the field, well, like oh my tired type. Like, like the high school kid quit like as far like he just stormed I, out there like I'm not doing he, this shit type he, shit. I mean, you know, you know how I am. <laughs> I, the high school kids, I get to, I get on them a little bit more. So yeah. you know, that day I was talking a little extra to him. And he was up to here with me. He was just like, I'm out. Yeah. And like you know, I threw a football at him. You know, just yeah. being extra. But pros. You know they're done when they just laid out. They'd be in the gym. After I've seen guys on the second like round of with the lift, and they just not in shape because our lifts are more like they're like fast tempo lifts. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna do a bench press to a bent over row to a medicine ball slam. Three rounds of it. So boom, boom, boom. Three rounds. Next thing, three rounds or something to where they get to that second cluster and they just. I ain't been working out. Like I'm, I'm shot. Like yeah. I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Like it's so many times, guys. Hey, bro, I'm, I'm just see you tomorrow. Let me, let me go recover real quick. You like? Hey, we just started like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I know. I, I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> See, it's like yeah. they don't really quit. It's just yeah. they just know. Like, is it? I'm not ready yet for this work type yeah. of work. Yeah. Is, yeah. It, is it different now? Cause you know, like in high school and college, you pretty much like working with your team all year long. And in NFL, you know, with the N- NFL PA, you got OTAs, mini camp, and training camp. Mm-hmm. So do a lot of guys 
do you feel uh, as a, when they get to that professional level, they work out? Not I want to say less, but since they're around the team less, they're doing you know less workouts or different type of things. They're not pushing themselves as harder. Do you feel like that's more common in NFL since they are like you know, like you said they're four time Pro Bowler like you know you don't need to be working out January to August. So yes, so pretty much like. Our guys usually come in March. Okay. They'll start in March. OTAs is in April. I mean, some guys even... So do this recovery for about two months. I mean, season usually... I mean... Wait, is so, a- so if you... Ma- the guys that make it to the playoffs, they'll come in March. Okay. When you got guys that finish January 3rd or whatever, January 5th, they'll take a two, three week off and we'll see them in February. Usually right after the Super Bowl or the week before the Super Bowl, guys that didn't make playoffs will start rolling in. Okay. But guys that make playoffs, probably see them in March. So you about six weeks to recover. Exactly. Okay. And then you got other guys that they know their body. They know they only need two weeks with us. So they'll they'll do what they do, and then they'll come two weeks before they go to OTAs. Because OTAs all just conditioning and, you know, walking through and all that. So. Mental mean, prep. Yeah, like exactly. That. So they has got to be in shape a little, you know, some okay. type of shape. So they'll just come get in quick shape. Or see off for summer. That's where we usually get all our guys for the summertime for that. That usually guys come for three to like five weeks. So they they're off for five weeks. Sometimes guys t- take a week off, go on a vacation, come for four weeks. Sometimes guys leave early, this and that. So usually we'll see the guys for roughly around three months out the year, like three months, like. Probably like three months. And, and there's anything that, uh, what do you work specifically around the, that right before a training camp, those three to five weeks? Is it different from what you're working yes. for uh, OTAs? A lot different. So OTAs, we really don't even go on the field. Okay. Guys burnt out on the field. They they don't even care about doing no DB work or running back work. or long. They just want to come in the gym, run on a treadmill, get a nice lift in, they out. Or come in the gym, get some band work with like some resistant band movement, lifting, they out. Summertime, we at we at the field three times a week. We're at the beach once a week, the hill once a week, plus lifting right after. So we 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 really go like six days a week summer. But that Wednesday is more of a recovery. So we'll be at the pool on Wednesdays or we'll do like some type of like mobility in the gym with the guys. But it's like it's like six days in the summer. I was gonna um, I was gonna ask you, uh, Q, how high do you and more like prioritize like stretching, like dynamic warm ups? You know, I know that I know those is important. You know, we we spend about seven seven to ten minutes on dynamic warm up. Okay. We uh we we we've tried this year. We really made an emphasis on like a lot more hip mobility, shoulder mobility, stuff like that because. Like, a few of our guys would have, like, a hip, you know, a It'd hip injury. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. My shit used to so, be off. Yeah. when me and Jamal, after every year, in, like, uh, September, we'll just go over the whole year, how the year went, and this and that. And, like, that was a big emphasis. Like, hey, we need to do more mobility stuff. We need to do more hip mobility. We need to do more ankle mobility, more this, more that with the guys. So, like, if it's going to be during the workout, it's going to be before the workout, it's going to be after the workout, have one of the interns walk them through it. We got to find a way to keep these guys, like, a little right. more mobile. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, that's that was, like, a big emphasis this year. Because the first two years, guys would work out, and then, all right, see you tomorrow. Like, no stretching out, nothing. Yeah. All my guys now – Hey, don't forget to stretch. Roll out. Do something. Like, don't yeah. just leave, you know? Yeah. So, it's hard when it's just us two to, like, make emphasis because guys be like, oh, I got something to do. But when we do get a gym and have, like, staff to be able to, hey, make sure these guys do this after. Make sure they get their shakes after. Make sure they do this after. Because, like, we've made a big emphasis on having shakes for the guys after, too. Yeah. So, okay. drink your, the protein and stuff and get that back. And do y'all got like one set? I know y'all be everywhere, but do y'all got like y'all own like one location of a gym? So we rent out space at a okay. gym. Okay. But uh, so we rent out space at this one gym in Hollywood. But this summer UCLA was thankful enough to let us use their facility yeah, there a lot. from mm. twelve to four. So we let to use the field, the weights, everything mm. from twelve to four. So it was it was lovely. 
Now, so our, our our morning guys would be at the other gym though in the morning. Okay. Know? Okay. I just want to talk about UCLA. Is there uh, are there facilities different from like any other college you've been to? Like you feel like they're I, up up notch, like top tier. I like UCLA's more than. Um, let's see, I like UCLA's more than pretty much every school I've been to, just because their weight room. It's literally like a uh, what's the thing in San Leandro? The they used to have uh, what is that? Not the garage, not a garage, but like. Um. You just open up. Oh, it's kind of like those warehouses where you yeah, just you know, like that. Okay, yeah. okay. Where the like seven one five. Seven five. Yeah. Okay, I got you. So UCLA, the whole thing, it's you like, just open it up. Okay. So you could be doing a deadlift or something. You could be doing some type of exercise with the weights, and then you go right on the, the field and like do a quick ten yard burst or something. And do some. Ju- yeah, oh, it's uh, oh, it's amazing. Okay, yeah. so you got a lot to work with. Oh, I, that want to bring me to so since you've been training these athletes the last three years. Has there been an athlete where you just like just wow you by far as like athletic ability? It doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh well, he's the best team in the league. This far Almost as almost freaking nation. Yeah, freaking, just athletic ability. Did you get Miles Garrett? Mm-mm. No, I heard yeah. he was freaking nation. Has there, has there been that one him. athlete where you're just like, bro, this dude's a freak? Rasheem Green. Rasheem Green. He plays tight end, right? He plays a DN for uh, Seattle? Seattle. Seattle, yeah. Okay. He, he, Different. They had him play inside at SC. And he wasn't inside, but that's what they needed him at the time. You know, he, oh, like three tech type of thing. Yeah, and he even left school early. He was still a third rounder, but he would have been a first rounder. He would have came back and stuff like that. But uh, I work with him a lot, and like I do his uh, positional work too. And him just getting off the ball, like he's not too. I'm a, he's not too far off from Von Miller with his get off. Yeah. Like he's one of those dudes that's that and he's only machine twenty two. Like, oh, he's still rolling. So that's the name. That's the oh, name we should yeah. be watching out Machine for. Green. Yeah. Machine Green, Machine Green, yeah. Seattle. There it go. There it go. Put it, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, before we wrap it up, I was he he started it right there. I was gonna ask you, um, you know, we are the five one zero huddles, the Bay Area thing. Um, I was gonna tell you right off a of, right off a few names of some Bay Area cats you've been training or that you got in the program. Uh, DeAndre Carter. You know, okay. D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's on my Eagles. With the Sac yeah. State. He's yeah. on my Eagles last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. With Houston now. Uh, Isaiah Langley. Okay. He's still he, playing? He's, he's from a, SC, right? He's, he's, a, he's a Raider camp right now. Nah, he, I did uh, see that. He's with the Colts now. Colts now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because they, they just had to, Raiders had to pick up a guard. So had yeah, to they had to pick up a guard. They had to wave him. And he okay. went straight to the Colts. He has good length. Real good length. Yeah, real good length. He he just needs to trust himself. He can ball, though. Zay can ball. Uh... Who else from the Bay? You got Pick, didn't you? Oh, yeah, Pickett. Yeah, yeah there's Pickett. Pickett. So, with him... You went to UCLA, correct? UCLA. Mm-hmm. Pick was the first one that, like, for college kids, actually gave me a chance to train them. Okay. Because I, I would hit them up and be like, what's up, man, LA now? Like, let's get some work in. A lot of guys, you know, bl- blow you off because you're young and they don't know if you know what you're doing. Yeah. Pick would be like, all right, like, where we at? And I'm like, I come to UCLA. So, it just worked out perfectly that... When he finished UCLA, he came right into training with us for uh, getting ready for his uh, so, pro day. No, not not the pro day for the uh, senior bowl. Senior bowl, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then after that, he was like, "I love what they do." Told his agent, "I'm not going to these." He wouldn't send him to EXO or something like that. But uh, uh, he was like, "I want to go back to JLT." So he came for uh, his pro day, and then right after that, did good as pro day. Got picked up by you, uh, the Chargers. What do you, they, I know he switched his position a few times. What are you playing? Playing safety. Safety? Okay, okay, okay. He started as like a running back. Yeah, that's all I was back asking and for. Okay. But he did probably yeah. everything in the league right now for yep. safety. With the Chargers. Okay, okay. Go so ahead. that's a good, it's a good look for him. He mm-hmm. he did really good in that first preseason. I watched. He okay. had like six, seven tackles. Okay, he okay. Was, that's another dude. I, I love Pick. Pick a good dude. Uh, who else we got from the base? One more. Uh, Taiwan Jones. Oh, yeah, yeah. He went oh, to Deer to Valley. Uh, uh, yeah. for Raiders. Oh, Raiders. Nice yeah. with the Bills. He with the Bills now? He okay. with uh, Wait, no. Houston now. Houston, yeah. He, he was with the Bills, Bills for three years. Yeah. He just okay. he just left the Bills. Y'all got Doug. Doug from our ring. Martin running back from our uh, he, Y'all still, he still with y'all? Yeah, Doug. Uh, he, that's, yeah. A, that's a weird dude, though. Huh? Well, I'm not, not weird. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> talking about him. Uh, just from what I heard, you know, he's yeah. kind of an introvert type of person. Okay. okay. So, he but he's still on the roster. He went to St. Mary's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Stop. from Stockton. He yeah. But he, he's still on the roster? Though? Yeah, he's still on the Raiders. Yeah, he was on there last behind, year. Um, he behind Jacobs. 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 And okay. uh, Jalen Sharp. 
<laughs> it's off topic, but I got the new Madden, right? Yeah. And I do a little QB1 shit. And I, I had to do it three times because at first all, I kept getting drafted by the Dolphins. They trash. <laughs> I finally get drafted by the Raiders. You know, I'm going stupid with AB. Bro, I do not hand the ball off because Doug. He's trash. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't want to go on wax, but bro, he yeah. don't get. I be doing a little sub every time I can to put Jacob. But you got bro. I feel like you got every time. I don't hand the ball Run, off at all. Running backs shelf life is so short. Cause I remember being at a Raider game. I saw Doug run for almost 300 yards. Yeah, like five times. Yeah, with the, like, Tampa with Tampa. Stupid, yeah. I don't know. So you know that running backs that that's different. But I mean, I'm glad you guys you got these guys from the Bay, DeAndre, Darius Pickett, Isaiah Lang, uh, Langley. So y'all, I mean. We want to see him do well. Represent the five one zero. Did uh, is there any uh any athletes you know you want to people should take take a uh you know look at this year for like up and coming that might not be a big name yet. Other uh, than uh, basketball player Thomas bas- Bryant. Thomas Bryant. Oh yeah, we talked Washington about him Wizards. off, off uh, mm-hmm. camera. Can, can you tell us a little bit about Thomas Bryant? It's a TB. He uh originally from New York. Went to. Huntington Prep out in West Virginia. Went there for two years and went to Indiana right after that. Ball to Indiana. They always said, like, you know, he's too skinny, you know. he, he I mean, he's 6'11", but he was just real skinny, you know. But uh, he got, like I said earlier, he got cut by the Lakers after his first season. Washington picked him up right away. Ball with Washington. Just got a nice little contract with them, three-year deal, to where at 22 you're getting – Nice contract like that. You just, you got a few more contracts left in, you know. Yeah. So they they see a lot in them. When I've been training him, it's been six different coaches that came to uh, watch the workouts. Mm. From the strength coach. And how tall is he? Six eleven. They they let Dwight go for him. Mm. So, okay. Yeah. I know you told me off camera. He can shoot. Did hear that he can shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can shoot. Thomas Bryant. What high school? College you went to? Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. He Thomas was there with a uh, Yogi. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I remember, okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, I remember a little, I remember a little. Y'all get back when we was on the AU circuit. Man, sir. Yeah, that's good. I mean, before, before we get out of here, actually. Yeah, Kill, you got my boy Badger? Y'all ain't had my boy Badger either, huh? Mm-hmm. You get my boy Badger, and you tell him tap oh, yeah. in with your boy. I got to holler at him. Badger got to come on the show. He ain't from out here, but I still got to holler at my boy. No, I feel like you, you know, Kill, I feel like you really put it on for the Bay, what you're doing. Definitely um, appreciate it. Also, yeah. I think this is a big thing for a lot of athletes to learn that that you can sp- still be a part of sports without playing in the league. You exactly. Know? Yeah. yeah, I seen that you were focused on your plan B, you know, going to your senior year, year with the training. Um, and there's a lot of uh, opportunities in football from the coaching side, the training, agents. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. Um, and I feel like you've shown that there's a lot of outlets. And I feel like a lot of, you know, football players, you listen to this, to always have that plan B and start looking at other outlets. If you love football, there's so many ways you can be part of football. And so I think Akil's a, a perfect example of that. And, I mean, see, you know, he's working with top athletes and, you know, bringing on some of these younger guys from the Bay who who will be top. So, I mean, I, that's, that's big, bro, and I appreciate what you're doing. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, appreciate great, great Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on, always, family. Appreciate always, it, Akil. Always. Still went for it. It's time to change the club.